Hello and welcome to yet another housing.com webinar. Our topic of discussion today is actually a question that's always there in the minds of prospective home buyers. And that question is, is now the right time to buy a home? I'm Jumul Ghosh, Editor-in-Chief, Housing.com News, and here to give us their insights on whether 2021 is really the right time to buy a house, I'm joined by an esteemed set of panelists. Uh, Mr. Amit Modi, he is the Director, ABA Corp, and President-Elect, uh, Credai Western UP. Sir, welcome. Thank you. Rajendra Joshi is CEO, Residential, the Brigade Group. Rajendra, sir, great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Jumul. Anuj Karadia is the director, Dosti Reality. Anuj, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jumur. Sanjay Kadiali is the business head for housing finance and emerging market mortgages for the Kotak Mahindra Bank. Sanjay. Thank you so much, Jumur. Yeah, great to be here. Yeah. Siddharth Pansari is the MD for Primark Properties Private Limited. Siddharth, welcome. You're on mute. Thank you so much, Jumur. It's a pleasure to be here. And Mani Rangarajan is the group CEO for housing.com, makan.com, and proptiger.com. Great, thank you for having me. So now, before we get down into the specifics of home buying in 2021, I have a question about the question itself. So is there such a thing as a good time or a right time to buy a home? And if there is such a thing, then does that also mean that there is a bad time or a wrong time to buy a home? So I'm really curious to know what you think about this. Mr. Joshi, you're smiling, so I think you already know what my follow-up questions will be. Why don't we start with your thoughts on this? Yeah. So I would say this, that the time to buy really is a, a personal uh, decision because home buying is a personal decision. In most times, this will be one of your largest investments that you are making. So uh, in my mind, uh, the timing, if particularly if you're an uh, end user, correct? Yeah. So if you're an investor, it's a different. Then you are looking for appreciation, you're looking for returns on the property, et cetera. But if you're an end user, what is more important is what's the location, what's the infrastructure in that place, who is the developer, what's the track record of the developer, uh, what kind of product, what kind of amenities. I think these are more important questions to look at uh, rather than worry about is it the right time, wrong time, because you are at a stage in life when either you are starting a family, so you want to buy a house, or your family has expanded, you want to buy a house, or you have moved up in your career. So th those are the various things. So in my mind, the prices will keep moving up and down, or as uh, Sanjay did point out, the prices haven't moved up at all in the last uh, three, four years. So I really don't think there would be a wrong time, right time. But as industry people, we all know, I mean, I can, we, will, we will keep talking about it. So in my mind, is there a right time, wrong time? I don't think that. all times are good times. Yeah, I like the way you answered that question. Mr. Modi, what are your thoughts on this? See, I'll partially agree with Joshi ji. Okay. Uh, I think uh, there's always a good time. Okay. And uh, as far as if you, whenever you have money in your pocket, and the rates are, uh, interest rates are so low. So this uh, time is more, more most preferred now. But uh, rest of the time, I believe if uh, we are seeing the price increase in, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, 5,000 rupees a square feet or 6,000 rupees a square feet property is generally across India. This is thing except Mumbai or, or in sub, uh, some uh, very uh, luxury pockets are there. So uh, uh, if we don't go in that pocket, Apart from that, 5,000, 6,000 is the general price. So there, if you have 200 rupees less or 200 rupees more, it doesn't bother. So whenever you have money in your pocket, I think that's a good time to buy the property. All right, fine. Uh, what about you, Anuj? Do you think that it's always a good time to buy a home? And are you saying that if that's the case, there is no wrong time to buy a home? Um, yeah, Jumur, so I'm... Even I do agree with um with Mr. Joshi that there's almost never a bad time to buy a home. And it's always very subjective and based upon the individual why they want to buy a home. Um, they, they are possibly at that right time in their career to either expand to a larger home or the or their family is growing larger. So they have a need of a larger space. And uh, that time would not really be defined by market conditions or scenarios. It's only from an investor standpoint when I would say that, that there has been a um, good time, better time, or like a best time to buy the home, how it was in 
the early 2003 to 6 when prices skyrocketed tremendously compared to now when in the last 5 7 years there's been no real appreciation yeah. all right what about you uh, siddharth what's your take on this I personally feel, you know, there is no better time to buy a home than it is today. Okay. For simply two, three reasons. One, you know, where if you take the PMAY subsidy into account, or you take the interest, uh, you know, interest uh, rate into account, there can't be a better or a lower rate, or you know, the PMA subsidy will eventually end sometime. You know, it was increased for COVID for one year. Second, you know, suddenly because of the world going digital and virtual, the need for space has increased. You know, in a family of four, you know, all the four need their own spaces. It's not only work from home, it's study from home, it's even the the wife or who is a non-working woman doing some activity from home. So each one needs their own space. So the need for space has genuinely increased. And if there is a need for space, like my other panelists have added, there can't be a right time or a long time, you know. Yes. Also, you know, while prices might have not increased, but apart from one or two markets, where you know, prices really shot up. There have never been instances in the Indian market of prices falling down by 10, 20, 30% or even 5% okay. for the side. You know, apart from a selective one-off cases where you know, prices are artificially shot up. So prices are not, and prices the uh, prices of metals or raw materials going up, prices are only going to go up. It is just a matter yeah. of time before prices, in some of our projects and market prices have already started increasing. So I think prices will only go north, it's not going to go south. So with this and the need for space and the interest subsidy and other factors put together, I think there can't be a better time to buy a house if there is a need to buy a house. Yeah. So, Mani, looking at the uh, traffic trends, you know, does it look like, you know, demand is uh, making a comeback, you know, post all the fears that we had about the uh, second wave? What do you think is happening in uh, 2021 currently? Mani, you're on mute. So when I look at demand, uh, we find that uh, demand has come up to well over pre-COVID levels. Uh, I think there is a difference between COVID, uh, the phase one that we faced last year, and uh, the one that we are facing this year. Uh, during the time last year, especially when the first lockdown was announced towards the end of March and uh, towards the first half of April, uh, traffic plummeted. So we saw uh, traffic come down about 40% on the buy side, uh, both in new projects as well as in resale, and about 60% on the rent side. Uh, this time around, uh, you know, the traffic uh, decline was less pronounced. Yes. Uh, and I think that is partially aided by the fact that during the first uh, lockdown last year, a lot of companies had announced uh, job cuts as well as salary cuts. And uh, we have not seen that this time around. The second thing is uh, from all the various consumer sentiment surveys and the behavior of the consumer, is that the need for a own home has never been greater. Yeah. Right in our country's history, and uh, one feels uh, safe within the confines of the home. I think uh, all my esteemed panelists have uh, made some uh, awesome points. I think there's never a bad time to buy a home. And the one thing I'd like to add is the affordability in terms of home buying has improved over the years. Right. So normally the affordability is measured by the number of uh, years you need to earn to buy a home. In a city like Mumbai, if I look at uh, you know five years ago, it would take almost like uh, 11 to 12 years of income. And now it's come down to about five. And the yeah. same goes across, uh, across other cities. So you're seeing uh, growth in development in the peripheral areas of the city. Uh, the emergence of smart cities, the emergence of metros is solid connectivity. So people no longer need to confine to themselves to trying to buy a home in the central business district but can look at the peripheral areas of the city. So that's a reason, uh, I think, why you know uh, it's become easier and more affordable to buy a house. Yeah. So Sanjay, everybody's talking about you know, all the things going for the market right now. Are you seeing you know, a reflection of that in the demand in terms of you know, housing finance? Tell us a little bit about the trends that you're seeing there. Absolutely. I think uh, so, and this is across all banks and NBFCs, I think what the panelists, all the panelists are saying, uh, that's one uh, clear voice across people who are who need houses are buying houses. I think that's a significant change over last three to four years. I think the second thing that has happened is that the confidence on the real estate as an asset class has gone up. And I'm not saying from an appreciation perspective. I'm saying the credibility of the developers. So 
post rera and the kind of developers who are there in the market the customer is absolutely confident that uh, this is the asset class i want to be in if i am in for long term because a home loan or a home buy is a 5 10 year buy minimum i think the second thing that we are observing what money talked about is the affordability so if i were to let's say call it an affordability index in india the affordability index is an all time low which is a good thing so affordability index is what it is your emi divided by your income so incomes have gone up in the last 5 years but your interest rates have come down and your real estate prices have come down or are flat let's let's call it flat okay. so actually your affordability index which is emi so emi as a part of your income has shrunk yes. which is why people are now moving from 1 bhk to 2 2 to 3 taking larger houses considering yes. moving from a rental to a uh, own use i think yes. that's a big segment most of our customers i think over 80% of our customers i can uh, confidently say are customers who buy for their own use and okay. as financiers we are extremely confident uh, lending to that profile all right so you know obviously you know since the topic is is 2021 the right time to buy a home we've got in a lot of questions around that so i'd like to bring in some audience questions these are just great questions actually you know my audience is doing my job for me so that's uh, fantastic so i'm going to sort of give you a sense of what our audience members want to know so mayank ji is asking why are real estate prices not dropping even though there is a glut of apartments in the inventory of builders uh, gurpreet singh is asking the same thing why there are no decline in prices uh, shubham kumar is asking you know that is this the right time to buy a low budget property for personal use and if yes then what is the benefit and sendil is asking what a lot of home buyers are thinking that do you think it's a good time to sort of buy a home during a pandemic so essentially people are asking about of course you know should i be buying amidst a pandemic and what's happening with the prices why aren't they softening so what what can we tell audience members mr joshi let's start with you so i would tell this uh, i would uh, quite agree with what uh, siddharth said one trend that i see uh, clearly is that prices are going to firm up yeah uh, and as uh, sanjay did point out prices haven't increased at all in last 3 to 4 years maybe longer in markets like bangalore yeah uh, but the input costs are going up yeah. second if you see there is a large brand consolidation which is happening in the real estate market yeah more and more smaller developers are going out of the play yeah. the share of the larger players is increasing larger players who have a track record and ability to deliver etc and yeah. costs are going up for example the steel prices have gone up by nearly 40 to 50% in the last 6 to 8 months and they are staying firm uh, typically steel prices go up and come yeah. down quickly the global steel demand is going up and that in a city like bangalore is increasing the cost of construction by 100 to 150 yeah. rupees steel alone and there is petroleum which is going up so i would think that once the markets come back to normal see in Bomb- cities like bombay it's already in cities like bangalore the lockdown is slowly getting unwound uh, prices will firm up one two should you buy in this uh, uh, time i would agree with all my other panelists said this is a low interest regime it yeah. won't stay here for very long so it would be good to move into a uh, product and prices will move up i am very certain of that so yeah. considering these two simple these two uh, factors you should buy from a home but i would say always from a large a reputed developer because these are difficult times still for smaller players nbfc are not lending financial institutions are very wary of lending to smaller developers so you need to be clear about where you are buying but it's a good time to buy yeah so anuj you obviously represent a really price sensitive market so what what do you have to say about you know the prices uh, not softening what do do you think our audience members need to know um certainly jumur so i would say that um we've been doing multiple cost studies of our construction cost over the last 4 5 years or so and if we just compare um our cost of construction that if you related to all developers across mumbai and thane in uh, the difference in cost in jan 2020 and june 2021 is anywhere between 8 to 12% increase in prices Yeah. of our input cost as joshi yeah. ji explained steel prices were expected to fall down when the rain start but there's been no change in that even cost of copper for our wires and cables cost of nickel 
cost yep. of aluminum yep. and yep. more importantly cost of labor and cement all of them are on the rise yep. so even though um consumers are seeing that government is passing on various incentives be it stamp duty across maharashtra or lower interest rates it's extremely challenging for a developer to further reduce prices to what yep. the customer expects from us yeah and uh, i would say that um across i would say um across various even globally prices have been increasing tremendously and it's a pattern that eventually does come to india it starts in the west eventually goes to the middle eastern markets in dubai and turkey and then comes to india so for example i was just seeing in the news that in in the month of may 21 home prices rock, um increased by over 35% in turkey yeah in the us and uk home prices are at a 14 year high yeah so india still has certain time to come to that stage yeah. but definitely maybe in the next 3 to 4 quarters or even after that right yeah. now it's just a matter of sustaining and maintaining a healthy cash flow but yeah. after that majority of developers will be pushed and have no option but to increase home prices yeah Mr. Modi, you represent a market, you know, where uh, inventory overhang has been an issue. Uh, what kind of impact has it had on pricing? Has it had uh, any impact on pricing? Have prices softened? What can you tell us about that market? See, a lot of inventory was available in last three to four years, but yeah. uh, that inventory has suddenly vanished now. And moreover, the inventory which was available at that price, uh, developers put, were not uh, making any profit on those things. It yeah. was just that they were not able to pay to financial institutions and the uh, uh, seller, uh, uh, land authority also. But yeah. uh, now seeing, uh, we see the rise in the material price, like you see cement, steel, what uh, rightly said by Joshi Ji and Aloj, uh, all the materials, all the materials have increased significantly. And now it depends at what stage of construction you are and what uh, material you are purchasing at this time. So your cost is varying from, you can say, 10 to 15 percent. In uh, If you are at, uh, uh, you say, civil, uh, uh, like uh, uh, construction stage, you are just putting up the civil work and all, then the cost will rise more. And if yeah. you are at finishing stage, then cost will be definitely a bit uh, different because steel and cement and PVC is uh, yeah. not the input of uh, that construction stage. And, yeah. and moreover, GST input we will use to get, uh, which is not available to developers. So yeah. definitely we have to build in that cost also. Uh, so in near future, I believe whatever inventory is available and uh, uh, people uh, have faith or uh, uh, what do you call um, have faith on developers, uh, they should uh, buy the property immediately. Otherwise, prices are going to rise. It is not going to suffer at all. At all. Uh, okay. uh, developers are specifically in our region, developers are not in position to soften the prices at all. So yeah. uh, I'll go with the other panelists in, on this. Yeah. So, so that would you say it's a similar trend in your market or would you say it's a slightly different story as far as uh, prices are concerned? No, I think it's absolutely Absolutely the same story. And if you want to add on to what Mr. Joshi said, you know, there is, you know, there have been big developers and small developers. I think see, what has happened is because of the overhang of certain malpractices about certain developers across the country, mostly yeah. north side, yeah. you know, customers were not confident. But you know, the large transition has happened with RERA and GST both kicking in, you know, it was one shift from unorganized to organized, and also the shift from honest and true developers, small developers to larger developers. Yeah. Now the challenge why the prices A is not coming down because A the costs are rising, you know, so yeah. prices actually can't come down. Yeah. And all the customers are actually chasing the same inventory of the better developers. Yeah. So, you know, nobody wants to go and pick something which is uh, inferior in any manner, whether it's the quality of the construction or the quality of the developer. Yeah. So if you are all chasing a better product and a better warranty and a guarantee, how yeah. can the prices come down? So yeah. I you know, and actually, if you look like like most panelists have already mentioned, but it's not only the cost of construction that are going up, the cost for sanctions, the cost for finances, yeah. all of these other ancillary parts to the project, you know, the timelines to the project, you know, people who've taken land over the last two years have not been able to launch the cost of interest. Yeah. So these ancillaries also going up, there is no way the cost will come down. The cost is also only just going to increase yeah. because everybody wants to buy the best. Yeah. Yeah. 
So money, it's a question we get asked very often, right? That, okay, this market has an inventory overhang, but why are the prices crashing? So this correlation, is it such a simple one that if there is an inventory, uh, you know, overhang in a certain market, then the prices have to come uh, crashing down? Or is there another way, you know, that as home buyers, when you're analyzing cost, is there another way to look at it? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty complex uh, to and uh, inventory overhang happens because it's a mismatch between demand and supply. Right. Yeah. If you take any market across the world, even if you take a market such as the U.S., uh, where demand far exceeds supply, you would find a case of inventory overhang. Yeah. And to understand inventory overhang uh, better, we need to circle back a few years and go back to the pre radar times when a lot of developers. Uh, uh, for, uh, you know, with uh, with uh, lower reputations, tended to launch projects across the country, and we saw like a glut of inventory, particularly yeah. in markets such as Noida. Right yeah. now, if we fast forward to post rera, yeah. developers have been extremely careful about launching new projects, and most of them have focused on completing existing projects rather than launching new projects. So, if you look at the trend over the last couple of years. New sales have consistently exceeded new launches in the market, with the result that inventory overhang has reduced. Right? Yeah. Some of the inventory overhang which we see in cities may not even sell at all. Right? We've got to be realistic because we still have instances of stalled projects across the country. Uh, but what I would say is that uh, you know there has also been a flight to quality. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, developers of repute here on this, this panel. And you see uh, customers flock towards uh, more branded developers as opposed to the, the lower reputed ones. In a country like China, for example, the, the, the top 10 developers in the country tend to account for like 30 to 40% of sales. And that is consistently rising. Whereas in India, while it's been rising, it's still less than about 10% of sales. So over time, you're likely to see consolidation and you're likely to see the share of branded developers increasing. Yeah, and I think uh, it's something we discuss in industry circles, right? That we say inventory overhang, it's like a one size fits all, but it's actually not. We don't know at what level of construction that inventory is. We don't know how long that inventory has been lying and not all inventory is equal. Like you said, some of it is not saleable at all. So it's not just a inventory overhang is equal to a reduction in prices. It's also about the quality of the inventory. And I think that's something, you know, it's important for audience members to understand that as well. Now, Sanjay, we've been talking about prices of uh, real estate. Now, home finance is going through its lowest interest regime, right? But I think it's important to sort of question how long is this low interest regime going to last? Because like all good things, this will also come to an end, right? So what's your assessment? Yeah, so I think absolutely very valid uh, question. I think two simple things that anybody as a layman and forget about people who understand finance, let's look at as a layman. I think let's look at what the central bank is saying. Central bank is saying that uh, interest rates for the next few periods will be constant or they are looking at an accommodative stand because their objective right now is get growth back. Okay. The second thing what they are saying is that the trans transmission of interest rates are much better. Yeah. So interest, a home loan is a 10 year, 15 year product. Even if the rates are down right now, I think from an investor or a home buyer perspective, they should not look at where interest rates are now. They should look at what kind of interest rate regime is there. So the regime is transparency and uh, transmission of rates. And everything now, at least what the banks fund, is linked to the RBI repo. Yeah. So unlike in the past, you cannot have a, a large gap of transmission of rates. So RBI reduces rate you will see it. RBI increases, you will feel it. I think yeah. that's that should put a lot of confidence in the investor that, right. that there will be a lot of transparency in the long term on interest rates rather than looking at are the interest rates low right now. All right. So, you know, we've got a lot of uh, micro uh, location centric questions. So uh, before we get down to the audience questions, I'd also like to know that uh, your answer to this question that is this is the right time to buy a home. Would that differ basis the micro location that you might be representing or even the segment? Or is there a one answer that fits all, you know, to a question like this? I think that's another important aspect of this question, you know, that we need to 
discuss what do you think mr joshi uh i would think that if uh, for example it e is it the right time to buy for example if you are in a market like mumbai south mumbai buying a luxury home if you have the money this is absolutely the right time because i don't think the developers would be more stressed than this uh, they would be willing to sit on the table and negotiate i used to work in mumbai i had projects in south mumbai so i can tell you that this would be a great time to go out and uh, buy in other markets it would be as i mentioned earlier it would yeah. be as good a time as uh, would be for any other the only other uh, aspect i would look at is things like pmay correct yeah. Yeah. they will have a certain shelf life Uh, yeah. it may not extend for uh, 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 very very long periods of time so if you are in that bracket and looking to get those benefits then yeah. this is the time to go out and buy so those are the two things those who are in the luxury segment and yeah. if you have the money i'm sure the developers will be willing to negotiate because they want to move out the inventory as amit ji uh, did mention or if you are in the affordable segment looking out to a buy a house things like pmay i'm not too sure how long government will continue to subsidize this say beyond say 2025 or 2024 etc so these two i think this is a great time to go out and uh, buy a look uh, property the third thing i would say would be that do go out and look for uh, locations where the infrastructure is coming up uh, one of my panelists uh, did talk about a lot yeah. of cities are putting emphasis on metros yeah. uh, road connections yeah. uh, etc uh, so so mr joshi we've had actually a couple of questions about the bangalore market and hyderabad market so as an expert uh, perhaps you could make some suggestions you know for our audience members that these are the micro locations that you know perhaps they could be looking at seriously so in bangalore i would say the uh, favorite location has been the east of bangalore uh, okay. uh, because that is where most of the it is coming up but yeah. i would say the north of bangalore is now yeah. seeing a lot of infrastructure development and yeah. the government of karnataka is putting up a very large uh, uh, industrial park uh, yeah. about uh, 3000 acre plus uh, okay. industrial park in north bangalore which i would see as a growth hub uh in the coming years and they are putting up the great thing is they are not just developing this they are putting up infrastructure yeah yeah so north of bangalore i would think would be a great place to invest in east yeah. has already seen an appreciation north will see yeah. the appreciation hyderabad uh, uh your famous markets closer the gachibauli the financial district etc but okay. also the same uh, uh, theory that the connectivity is improving so even yeah. city sites are getting connected very well to the it corridors so even if you come to the central parts of uh, hyderabad or eastern parts of hyderabad they are all getting connected very well so they are good places to invest today because some of these places are today at about 6000 6500 the one closer to the it corridor they are already moving up to 7500 8000 so there yeah. is a price differential so though i would say go invest in markets where connectivity is good they may yeah. be a little away but there is connectivity Yeah. So, Anuj, what uh, recommendations would you give about the Mumbai market? And I'd also like to bring in an audience question where uh, Ramesh Ramachandran is asking: Will reality prices correct further in 2022 and 2023? And he is also asking: Is it better to invest in Mumbai or Chennai? Now, I know this is an apples and pears uh, question, but uh, you know, how, how would you like to address this question? um so to address the question um i would say that see mumbai is predominantly de defined by its railway lines yeah. the central yeah. line and the western line yeah. or what we or, or what you even some people even term the central line as, as the harbor line yeah and the western line has already seen a lot of good development over the past couple of years yeah and is now um majorly filled with new metro development coming up metro line 2 3 and 4 all of them are, are along central mumbai yeah but there um the area i would say is a very very um heavily trafficked area okay. and coming to the um eastern part of mumbai yeah. especially when you have the eastern freeway taking you from kolaba to ghatkopar towards thane yeah. is where home prices haven't risen as they have risen along the western part of mumbai yeah. so that would be a very good and upcoming location okay location starting all the way from Shivri to Baikala, Mazgao, Vadala, Sayan, where actually we do a lot of work in Vadala and Sayan, and then Pawai, Kanjur Marg, Mulund are areas that have not experienced the highs what has been experienced 
along the western suburbs and uh, even with various developments of infrastructure be it the trans harbor link connecting shivri to new bombay and further to new bombay airport once that achieves completion there'll be a rapid change in infrastructure and change in housing preferences and we will see the shift come 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 and focus more towards the um eastern part of mumbai actually yeah other than that even i would say far off parts of mumbai that actually i would not call them in mumbai they would be part of mmr regions yeah. like um uh, regions like i would say um kalher or dombivali vasai virah and naigao yeah all those zones were i would say fairly outskirts of mumbai but now with development and in those in those prices it, it, um in those areas connectivity has improved drastically yeah. and with the advent of the metros getting there has become very simple for example if you were to travel from thane to greater thane um what we call even as village kalher yeah. is just a 10 minute drive or so yeah but you are able to buy a home at half the price of thane yeah. you enjoy the social infrastructure of thane staying just 10 minutes away from thane yeah. Yeah. and um coming to the question um com- coming to the question asked by um the attendee um definitely me being being a mumbai kar i would always support mumbai more more compared to chennai but i'm okay. sure um money w- w- would have a different view money would you like to be team chennai you know just for this question uh, just to sort of apprise you one of our attendees has asked whether he should choose between mumbai and chennai i know it's a uh, apples to pears comparison but uh, perhaps something you would like to say about the chennai market i think uh, I, i think both markets have their uh, merits uh, you know in terms of uh, buying it it depends on the personal preference uh, right and uh, as uh, anurji said there's enough room for price appreciation in mumbai uh, mumbai is consistently growing and let's not forget that mumbai constitutes about 30 to 35% of the country's uh, real estate market uh, so far as chennai is concerned uh, you know uh, uh, till like 1 to 2 years ago the market was entirely almost south chennai right so when you looked at the old omar bell showing in a road so we see oh right but what we are now seeing is the western part of chennai right so for example areas like for example mogape right? it's, it's it's doing phenomenally well and uh, we are likely to see uh, the northern part of uh, chennai you know also kind of start to do well uh, yeah you know, this is like street with a pyramid over there and uh, one thing i would talk to say about chennai is chennai is now becoming a home to a lot of sunrise industries so if you look at uh, uh, defense you look yeah. at price quick ones you're looking at data centers uh, you know the market is kind of growing there and uh, and once you see a lot of manufacturing activity in chennai then you're likely to see some amount of price appreciation as well so it it really depends on the personal preference so, but what, what what i would like to point out is that uh, you know one could not go wrong investing in either chennai or in mumbai at current prices yeah Mr Modi we've got a couple of uh, questions around the uh, NCR market as well now Sonia Ahuja she is asking what are your thoughts on the new uh, launches in Delhi NCR there's a specific Noida question I'd like to take that up as well now Anurag Jain is asking that considering the pandemic situation would it be advisable to book a flat in under construction projects as there is uncertainty of unforeseen lockdowns and economic impacts and what is the probability of projects to be delivered on plan date in sector 150 uh, in noida so i think even this under construction versus ready to move in i think it's an important uh, question you know apart from the uh, sectoral question as well so what what can you tell our uh, audience members yeah jumur uh, in sector 150 most of the projects are under construction except two projects all 95% projects are under construction now if you have trust with the developer i think you, uh, you should go with them there's no problem in that but uh, you need to see the track record of the developers who are uh, doing construction over there but most of the developers as far as 150 is concerned i would rate them uh, good developers and they can go for one in 150 there's no problem and moreover at 150 because lot of developers are there and there was uh, uh, under construction inventory was there but it was under construction not completed inventory was there so yeah. uh now uh, some of the projects are 70 80% complete now so yeah. uh, 
they must have trust on those developers and they, they, they should uh, take in 150 days over it shouldn't be a problem buying in 150 now all right and i know uh, sonia who just questioned it was a bit of a sweeping question about you know the new launches in uh, delhi ncr would you like to just maybe comment on that uh, quickly yeah in delhi you don't have any residential projects but yeah. uh, gurgaon but but in gurgaon you have a lot of inventory i believe on sona yeah. so new sectors are there and uh, they have launched din dayal din scheme where four acres three acres five acres housings are also coming up previously yeah. it was 10 acre or above that not yeah. lesser than 10 acre housings were there so a yeah. lot of uh, inventory is there in yeah. gurgaon uh, and no extension we have launched uh, some uh, uh, new projects uh, but credibility of the developer has to be seen and uh, uh, they can go for node extension is really upcoming and the prices are also very very affordable right now but yeah. at this stage if they buy then it will be really cheaper and interest rate is also cheaper so they should go for uh, new launches also there's no problem yeah so that can you uh, make some recommendations in the kolkata market what kind of micro locations uh, can buyers look at seriously see uh, so kolkata largely is you know it's a very large and a very old city i think so there are different markets at different price points so based yeah. you know rajarat is you know one large you know where i think 40 50 percent of the sales are coming it is it's the gurgaon of calcutta where you have a planned township where whether it's it employment social infra so so that is one you know and it has enough to offer from a 4000 rupee to a 6000 rupee bracket then there are different suburbs like joka southern bypass garia which is you know 3000 rupee onwards pricing and then there are north calcutta in different pockets Rajarat yeah. amongst all looks at the most uh, promising aspects, but you know, a lot of times you think the demography of Calcutta is such that people want to expand or people want to shift to a better location within the same micro catchment. Yeah. So again, it would be all because you know there is the way it is. So each market is different. So that is what we see in Calcutta. You know, people are more comfortable to stay closer to the family. There is more of a joint family system. So the need yeah. for space is coming because families are getting more micro and the need of for space, so you know, they still want to stay within the same catchment. So these are the, some of the more promising catchments in Calcutta. All right. Now, uh, Sanjay, we've got a couple of uh, home finance uh, related uh, questions and I think uh, these are important uh, questions. So uh, Biswajit is asking, you know, that is 2021 the right time to take a home loan. So he's taken a spin on the right time to buy a home. Now he's saying, is it the right time to take a home loan? Subhash Mani is asking, I'm age 40. Is it lucrative to invest in a home loan now? And if yes, then for how many years? I think uh, these questions are important, Sanjay, because we've discussed this before. I think we need to give our audience members a sense of where are the uh, credit scores are at, you know, uh, the lending norms, you know, have they become stricter because things have changed in the last couple of months even, right? So uh, do give us an overview of, you know, what's happening with home loan rates, credit scores, etc. Absolutely. So one on one side, you see home loan rates coming down. So they yeah. are, I think they are you. Uh, they are the at the bottom over the last uh, thirteen or fourteen years. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that uh, uh, eligibilities have gone up. So people have been very casual about their financial approach. And uh, so while on one side we see civil, and it's not that the pandemic has not resulted in everybody's civil uh, uh, coming down. There are yeah. people where the civil scores have actually gone up. Yeah. So they have liquidated their assets. They have reduced their leverage. They're saying, we'd, why take unnecessary interest costs? So yeah. this is like what I said, uh, the market has moved from investor to user on yeah. the home segment. So, yeah. uh, and the resale percentages have gone up. So we used to do about 10, 12% resale. That's doubled in the last one year, which means effectively a lot of investors would have come out of their properties and sold to actual users. Yeah. So I think that's a very so that's a very positive thing. People who are reducing their leverage, interest costs, uh, their uh, civil scores are improving. Uh, yeah. I, from a home default perspective, I don't see too much of issue. But yes, people are incurring issues on the credit card, personal loans. Uh, so uh, and people, uh, the way uh, uh, consumers are thinking that uh, since home loan is the biggest part, I will not default. But uh, can I? go a little slow on my credit card payments or on my personal loan payments. Yeah. Now that spoils the entire civil. So the, and this person's accessibility to finance will get yeah. impacted. So yeah. I'm, uh, so uh, the message to everybody is whether you want to buy a house right now, 
whether you want to take a loan right now i think it should come from your need and okay. should not come from the external environment you should not be over leveraged and just keep as a as a cushion right now uh, whatever your exposure is on a monthly basis keep about 5 to 6 months of that as a liquidity aside whatever yeah. you uh, are uh, paying as an emi so if your emi on all products put together is about 40000 keep about 2 and a half lakh aside in some other asset class which you can liquidate in one or two months yeah. but i think the the uh, the the question that has been uh, answered on home is the question that is, the same answer is applicable on a loan so there is uh, if this is the best time to buy uh, a home this is the best time to take a finance yeah, yeah. all right so you know it's interesting we've been talking about buying a home uh, our uh, audience members clearly want us to sort of deep dive into what type of home so we've got a couple of questions around yes we want to buy a home but what type of a home so i'd like to take up some audience uh, questions now uh, lakshmi narayan and k is asking is it better to buy an individual house or an apartment uh sneha shastri math is asking it is my first time investment and i want to know which one would get me the best parallel income whether it's a farm a plot or a, a flat so uh, mr modi perhaps uh, can you start with your insights how do the, how do you evaluate what type of a home i should be uh, buying right now see we are sitting in ncr and if you are buying a individual house the cost of individual house and the apartment it varies uh, from uh, what do you say 50 lakhs to individual house may uh, you may buy at 5 crore rupees so there is a huge amount of difference in the prices and as yeah. far as farm is concerned it further you can go down to 10 crore 20 crore so there is a huge gap this is very difficult to answer that what kind in what kind of budget you have but yeah. uh, for a safe investment if you are uh, uh, you want to take a house or home in a budget of 1 crore to 2 crore then i would say certainly it should be an apartment all right uh, would the answer be similar uh, mr joshi for the markets that uh, you are representing so i would say this that if you are looking to uh, uh, live in a home in comfort i would always uh, argue for apartments for the simple okay. reason is that the comfort that you get the kind yeah. of service that you get in yeah. in a apartment complex you would not get in an individual house yeah. i mean if you want to call a plumber in an apartment complex it's so much easier in an individual house you would have to call chase some guy so there are many many advantages of moving to an yeah. apartment complex yeah. the only other answer i would give uh, is in a city like bangalore or a chennai yeah. Yeah. Uh, where there is still land available if yeah. land will always appreciate yeah. so if you are looking from a pure investment perspective correct a plot in a good location from a good developer is still a good buy if you are looking at a pure investment perspective but if you want to buy a place to live as uh, uh, amit ji said in a medium budget apartment is the best if you have the money of course there are villas there are many other options but if you are say a crore to 2 crores kind of budget i think apartment is is the best option anuj uh, this question would it be even relevant for the uh, mumbai market because we very often don't speak about farms and uh, plots etc what do we want to say about the mumbai market in terms of the type of home you know that you can invest in um i agree with you that it's very very rare for someone to actually buy a plot in mumbai unless you're a yeah. um high net worth or a industrialist family Yeah. That's where you have a lot of, I would say, plots being purchased along South Bombay. But yeah. For the um average customer, the ideal budget for Mumbai would range between one to two point five CR. And if you want to go below one point five or under one, you need to look into other parts like Thane, Navi Mumbai, yeah. Dombey Valley, and Vasai Virar. But gradually, the concept of plotting is not coming up in Mumbai, but it's getting popular in Pune. Yeah. and uh, even there was a um recent launch by a by a by a developer actually um loda group did a launch yeah. recently yeah. where they launched um plots right in anjur fata so that would be defined yeah. as between thane and bhivandi and they had a pretty good success yeah. is um having a plot gives you a um whole level of satisfaction and peace compared to having having a house in an apartment yeah yeah and, uh, the density in mumbai is especially high Yeah. If you want to buy a property in any housing society, 
You're yeah. one in 3,000 families staying there. Yeah. So that what's the aspiration in uh, Kolkata because your reality so like Anuj mentioned right like Mumbai the reality may be flat, flat apartments but the uh, aspiration is there so what are the trends what are the uh, you know what are the buyer preferences in the Kolkata market in Bengal you know it's always been Nijer Bari you know where you have a home with a so if, you know you being a Bengali I think would yeah. relate to that statement more. Yeah. But again, I'm saying, I mean, you know, there are matured customers now. And it again, you know, one size does not fit all. Each one has their pace and preferences. So yeah. I think firstly, the customer needs to understand whether it's a first home or a second home. Yeah. Then at what stage of life he is in, you yeah. know, for people having a larger family or children, you know, obviously uh, taking an apartment with all the complex and facilities makes sense. Yeah. There are people, you know, at the side end of their career where they're looking more towards a retirement home, you know, they might prefer more of a villa house. Yeah. Also, it depends on your working. If you are largely working from home or something, you need a different infrastructure. Yeah. When you're working within and you have to travel to office every day, you know, then your location becomes key. Yeah. Wherein, you know, you want to be closer to the office, closer to the metro, more accessible. Yeah. So I think all these factors, the person has to take an informed and more calculated decision on what works for him and his family. Each one has its pluses and minus, like somebody, I think, mentioned, you know, there's a higher appreciation on land, you know, you can't leave that fact, that is a fact of life. And, yeah. you know, an apartment definitely brings in more convenience and set of, you know, easy to move on, easy to move out, stuff like that. So I think to each one is own and, you know, we need to fit out there. See, the villa project or the grow houses projects are difficult to get within the city because land is more expensive. Yeah. So choosing that, you know, you're moving away from the city. So you have to mix and match and decide what works best for you. Yeah. So money as a as a business, you know, you're in a unique position, you know, you are uh, sort of, you know, dealing with all types of houses, right? So from your vantage position, does it look like even now, you know, flats and apartments, they sort of have the lion's share of not just the market share, but even the aspiration uh, share uh, amongst home buyers. What are your observations? I think flats and apartments are really a great buy, especially if you're looking at the middle segment home around uh, 40 lakhs to about a pro, yeah. uh, because it's very difficult to get like a villa or a villa for a price uh, of less than less, say, 1 to 1.5 crores. Uh, and uh, one of the things we need to remember is that uh, the kind of amenities that developers come up with across the country, uh, it's simply amazing, right? Secondly, uh, when you look at the newer developments, uh, especially over the last couple of years, a lot of developers tend to focus on open spaces, right? So even in a COVID kind of scenario, uh, you know, if people can be safe in an apartment complex, yeah. right? And it's, it's not that apartments are are going to be different from independent homes, particularly when you look at the new developments. And it really depends on market to market. It's Siddhar pointed out in Kolkata, it mostly has to do with apartments. Yeah. Uh, similarly in Noida, in sector yeah. 150, for example, 80 uh, percent of the sector is supposed to be open spaces. So of recently, we've seen a lot of flurry of activity, yeah. in, uh, you know, given the unique uh, amenities that 150 offers, such as, for example, uh, in a sports city. So yeah. that's one thing. Yeah. If you look at Gurgaon, for example, one of the things which is becoming uh, popular is under the Dindal Bade scheme, you're having low rise developments uh, you know, across Gurgaon. Yeah. Uh, and you're also seeing the emergence of builder flows. Right? If you look at markets like Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Chennai, uh, apartments are still uh, popular and have the lion's share of inventory. Of late, we have seen some demand, for example, in villas uh, in cities like Hyderabad, though they tend to be a little away from the central business district and more in the expensive side. And particularly in South, uh, land is, is uh, very, very popular uh, yeah. for the simple reason that Mr. Joshi has said, it offers a potential to, for price appreciation. And yeah. also if people want to live in an area which is less dense, it offers the opportunity to construct an independent home at a later date. So it really depends on the aspiration of the individual consumer uh, yeah. and the project and also the particular city that they are living. 
Yeah. So I think in the interest of time, I'll move to the last question now. Now, uh, we've received a lot of audience uh, questions about this. You've all established, you know, that the last couple of years, you know, prices have been fairly stagnant. We've not seen too much property uh, movement, you know. So now uh, home buyers want to know that when can we start seeing some appreciation in the prices of our homes? Uh, so, Mr. Joshi, what kind of, a, uh, you know, sort of a time vantage uh, you know point can we give them what any any kind of a uh, time frame you'd like to guess uh i think uh, both anuj and amiji did uh, allude to this earlier currently many developers are pushing for cash flows hmm. uh, and therefore not really increasing prices though there is cost pressure yeah uh, in my own mind uh, in the next two to three quarters Okay. You will see uh, prices moving up in markets okay. like Bangalore, Chennai. Hyderabad is already seeing. Uh, uh, you would be surprised to know that Hyderabad prices have already been moving up in the last uh, three, four quarters already. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this I, this is what I would see. But the okay. price rise, again, would be limited. I, I go back to the uh, point that to the larger developers who have the ability to deliver, who have the capacity to... Uh, pull on in these uh, difficult times. You may yeah. not see a price rise. In fact, the smaller developers, those who are in distress, might actually you might see discounts. So I would yeah. only tell the audience to be beware as to where you are buying. Yeah. So uh, Siddharth, Kolkata has obviously been a unique market in the sense, you know, the highs have been slower, therefore the lows have been uh, slower. So in terms of price appreciation, uh, what kind of a time frame do you think uh, buyers will have to wait for? I I think in Kolkata, we've already seen, uh, uh, you know, price rising from September till March in this quarter because the prices again have been pretty good and all the customers have largely been chasing the better project and the better development. Okay. So I think we've already seen a significant, uh, you know, even just uh, in all the mid-price segments, you know, even up till of 10,000 rupees a square feet, we've seen a significant escalation. Somewhere it's five percent, somewhere it's ten percent, somewhere it's even fourteen, fifteen percent. So that's the price range that has already happened in the last six months. Yeah. Since that has already happened, I think it should sustain for some time. But if you know metal prices and commodity prices stay at this level, you know it could rise further. Now whether that uh, will happen before the festive season or post the festive season, that only the next two three months will say because you know the last two three months have gone in lockdown. So currently yeah. it's more important for all of us to maintain those prices for the time being and get back the sales velocity. Once the velocity comes back, but I definitely feel the prices will only go north to the Yeah. Now, Mr. Modi, I know that your uh, projects, you know, per se, have given great uh, returns, you know, to those who have invested in them. But the overall uh, market, how much time do you think it will take, you know, before uh, investors and home buyers are able to see some kind of price appreciation? See, uh, at present, uh, I'm working in Noida and Greater Noida. And um, for last seven years, if you see, we have sold more than 7,000 apartments out there. Yeah. And last year, we launched one project uh, of 600 apartments and we sold uh, 300 apartments in one month only. And yeah. that we launched at 5,200. Now the prices are 66, 6,700 we are seeing. Yeah. So we are able to survive because the prices has risen, uh, material prices has risen so much. Now, yeah. Uh, further, if you at at present, if you are investing these uh, these projects also, uh, further I'll see that uh, the kind of inventory we are left with, and there are no more new launches as far as, uh, as Noida is concerned. So I see that there will be a price rise uh, as soon as we are nearing completion. So um, again, we uh, uh, we are being repetitive as far as buying a home is concerned. I would suggest each and everyone to buy a home. Um, uh, it depends definitely on the developer and if you don't have any tr if you have trust deficit then definitely no but if you have trust on the developer you should go for uh, buying the apartment yeah so money do you agree with uh, what mr moti essentially said you know that now is the time to sort of look at a great product you know and make a great purchase rather than just be a little myopic and look at you know by when what kind of roi can i look at is that how you would uh, analyze the market right now Absolutely. See, uh, one of the things that we need to remember is that uh, during the first phase of the pandemic last year, prices did not crash. Yeah, yeah. And it's so said that the prices would decline by as much as 20 to 25 percent, and uh, prices did not reduce. I mean, this in any market, there'll always be discounts on offer. Right. Yeah. And 
there's always going to be a stressed developer who wants to kind of dispose of the inventory. So you'll find uh, prices on, on, on certain projects to be on the lower side with other startups, right? That, that, that's a trade-off that, that buyers need to make. This is the ability of that developer to complete the project, particularly for an under construction project, versus buying with a reputed. Uh, but as a whole, I would say that uh, the prices will not go south. So you're unlikely to see a secular decline in prices. Uh, uh, this is a very price sensitive segment. So developers tend to think hard before they uh, uh, increase prices. But given the increase in the cost of construction, and if the cost of construction is going to remain the same over the next uh, couple of quarters, you're likely to see a price increase by a couple of percentage points, or you'd see discount percentages come down, right? Yeah. So either of the two is going to happen. So the message that I want to leave uh, buyers with is that uh, prices are definitely, and uh, given the fact that uh, prices have not really appreciated over the last few years, uh, this is a great time to buy real estate because the prices can only go up from here. Uh, we've already seen in the case of Hyderabad and Ahmedabad uh, that inducer demand and land prices have increased. And consequently, uh, you know, prices in Hyderabad have increased by about 10 to 15 percent in the last couple of years. Yeah. And uh, that will likely ring true for other markets, not immediately, but over the next few years. Yeah. So Sanjay, I know you are representing the home finance side of things, so I won't ask you to uh, comment, you know, on the price appreciation. But here's what I'm curious to know in terms of, you know, people taking loans. Have you seen any uh, specific trends in terms of are they taking the same amount as they were, say, maybe taking uh, two years ago? Uh, have the amount of loan, you know, is that is that dispersal amount? Is it reducing? Is it increasing? What have been your observations? Yeah, yeah. So very, uh, I think this is, there's a, a distinct change that is happening. One, people's own contribution is going up to the amount of, uh, to the, uh, the wife or the spouse is coming in to increase the eligibility of the home buyer. So, right. So now about 45, 50% or actually more of our home buyers are actually couples who are both earning. So, which means that let's say somebody were to be looking for a one BHK in Bombay can actually move to a two because his eligibility goes up. That's yeah. one. Two, we are seeing a lot of people who were renting out moving to their own accommodations. Okay. And uh, I think the uh, if I'm a financial planner, let's say I'm a, I become a financial planner for the person who's asking this question, that uh, is it the right time to buy so that uh, will I be able to sell at an appreciated price? I think just two questions to this person. If you sell tomorrow your house, you're going to buy another house. You're going to buy a house with a larger, uh, you're not, so let's say you buy a 2 BHK tomorrow, you will sell that to buy a 3 BHK. So let's say next three years, prices do not appreciate. Worst scenario. A 3 BHK will also not appreciate which you buy after three years. So a financial planner, there's nothing wrong in buying right now. You need it. You sell after three years, a 3 BHK will also come at a lower price. The yes. second is you want to reduce your exposure. That is why you're selling. So then, uh, so I think, the, the question uh, 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 that this person is uh, that this person has, I think he should be absolutely confident. I think anybody in the market, and we do a lot of focus group with our customers also. And there's a lot of uh, 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 resistance or anxiety because of the environment. So there yeah. are job losses. There are civil scores getting uh, uh, reputation, civil scores, businesses, lockdown. I have been staying in a rented accommodation all my life. Should I move to my own house? I need a house. I was yeah. staying in a one BHK, but I need a house because I have to work from home. How do yeah. I manage? I think as a financial planner, we will be very confident if it is within your means, this is the perfect time to take that decision. Because yeah. the, the decision of renting to, you know, and a lot of these millennials say that uh, we should be asset light. Yeah. The concept of, uh, yeah, yeah. Do not buy your car, go, yeah. use a Ola. Now just think, uh, so Anuj would understand this. I stay in Lokanwala. If I were to go to Powai and hire an Ola, and suddenly the driver after midway uh, says that, okay, I, I'm i feeling hungry. I, I, I'll, uh, you need to get down here and take another cab. That's what happens in rental accommodations. We have all gone through grumpy landlords and we have had issues with them. And that's one of the reasons why we need to have our own house. It is not a pure financial decision. So yeah. I think that's something that people need to get out. Plus, yeah. I think it's a, a from a from a financing perspective or a loan perspective. I think 
uh, like what I said previously, it's a beautiful transmission of interest rate regime. Do not look at it like a low interest rate regime. Okay. So if you have been careful, if you have been like uh, frugal, you're not like overspending, I think we should go ahead and buy a house rather than renting and staying with a grumpy landlord. And uh, I think people, so that's the confidence that uh, the viewers should get. Yeah. So Anush have deliberately uh, kept it so that you get the last word because interestingly, you represent a market which has traditionally been the most uh, speculative, right? So of mm -hmm. course, you know, this question must be coming up, you know, that fine, I'll buy a home right now, but when can I possibly see some appreciation? Uh, so how do you want uh, home buyers to sort of, you know, look at this question? Uh, so, Jumur, I would say that um, I have a slightly different answer compared to all my fellow panelists. Okay. And um, it would be that just um, in October, November 2020 is when new rules for the entire state of Maharashtra were released. Yeah. And uh, Maharashtra operates differently compared to other states in a way that earlier, every, every um, area, be it Mumbai, Thane, Nena, Sidko, had their own planning authorities. Yeah. Now the authorities will remain the same, but all of them will follow the same rules. Yeah. So the FSI you would get in Lower Perel, you get in Nasik as well, and in Kolhapur. Yeah. So lots of jobs across Mumbai, which were actually unviable, yeah. or they had been launched, they had been sold, but now the developer's in stress. And yeah. even if a known developer would come in and rescue him, the job just wasn't viable. Yeah. Now with the new rules, all such jobs have become viable. Yeah. So... I would say the number of developers have decreased tremendously across yeah. Maharashtra, yeah. but every developer's share is going up. Yeah. So even though we have experienced a um, substantial decrease in inventory overhang due to stand duty rebate, yeah. I see supply going up drastically across Mumbai, Thane, all parts of yeah. majorly MMR. Yeah. And it would take us approximately a year or longer as well to see any kind of price appreciation. So thank you. Thank you for that candid answer, uh, Anoj. You know, I think it's important to sort of give our home buyers a realistic uh, timeline. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you so much, audience members, for being there with us. This was a fantastic decision and this was an amazing discussion. Thank you, panelists, for such incredible responses. We hope to see you uh, soon, our audience members. That's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy till we see you again. Bye-bye.